What's up, everybody? It is December 13th, Wednesday slate. Uh, nine games tonight. I was off last night going to uh, a little winter wonderland. Now that that's out of the way, I can get back to DFS. Um, I'll be playing tonight, tomorrow, Friday. We'll do live before lock all three nights. Um, so we're going to get into a pretty heavy stretch here. Some interesting games, some value already out, um, which is good. There's two spots that have some relatively low salary guys we can pencil in, so it's going to be good to look at the bigger guys. Um, half of these lines are made up. Um, why is Marquis Chris's name short? Isn't there two S's in Chris? Yeah, there it is. Um, so, that, you know, they are subject to change a little bit based on the injuries, but I'm usually not bad about uh, entering these in, so I think it's a, a decent starting point, but let's just get into it now. Nine games, it's gonna be, gonna be a longer one. So first up, we've got the Pacers hosting the Oklahoma City Thunder, um, and I'll pull up the lines just in case, just to double check, because my memory is garbage. Okay, so this one does have a line, which is good. Um, one point line uh, Indiana the favorites at home 212 total Indiana with a 106.75 implied total which is seventh and um, just off the bat Miles Turner looks really good on DK and nothing else just immediately stands out so let's look at everything else why does that look so huge Good enough. Uh, let's refresh these since I you know, refuse to do any work before I start actually recording this. <sighs> I'm excited for tonight. I got another good feeling about it. That could just all be nonsense, but I'd like to assume that my good feelings are positive for me. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. All right, now let's grab the Pacers. This will be an interesting game. The, uh, the, the Paul George back to Indy narrative should be alive and kicking tonight, especially since the Pacers have been like sort of better than the Thunder. I have a button. There we go. Okay. Man, I didn't realize the Thunder give up as many threes as they do. Um, I want to take a, take a look at Boyan Thad. There's no way I'm taking Oladipo. He's 10,000. <laughs> can we, I mean, can we talk about that for a second? Victor Oladipo is a... Wait, why is he 9,900 here? 9,900 on FanDuel. He's 10,000 in my export. <coughs> That's interesting. What is he for real? So he's 10,000. That's weird that the pricing is wrong. Do I have the wrong import? Uh, 10,000. That's interesting. Why does Fantasy Cruncher have him wrong by 100 bucks? Either way, it, not that it changes anything. Oh, 10,000 is insane. It's so insane. He's taken 28, 24, and 20 shots. He's taken more than 20 shots in five of his last six. 
getting to the line a ton in his last two. Look, there's no way I'm taking him, but man, dude's playing out of his mind. What does this chart look like? Look at that. He was not playing really well. He was under one point per possession, or one point per minute in fantasy at the beginning of November, and then he is now just under 1.5 as an average, um, but was up over 1.5 in like a rolling average. Just dude's going off. He had 2.16 fantasy points per minute in 34 minutes a couple nights, like, what was that, November 20th? That was when he had like four or five steals and four or five blocks. Anyway, that's not what we're here to do. We're not here to talk about Oladipo. I don't think that he's playable at 10,000. So, just full stop right there. I'll look at Bojan because I always do, and I'll look at Thad because I always do. Bojan, 4,500, so he needs 22. Not so great the last two. Um... <clears throat> You know, he can get there. It's not the best spot, but I'm not uh, against it. And you guys know, it's always good to just have these sort of low price small forwards in the chamber for later. Now, Thad is interesting to me because if we just think about this from a lineup perspective, I would expect Roberson to be on Oladipo, which leaves... PG and Mello split between, you know, we'll say Boyan and Thad. So Boyan should probably get Mello, and Thad would probably get Paul George, would be my expectation. So Boyan might have a decent look, a couple decent, like, open looks from three. And that's all for me. Like I said, Miles Turner for uh, DK only, not for uh, FanDuel. So now we'll go to OKC. I would imagine Paul George will be super duper chalky tonight just because, which is fine by me because I was probably gonna take him anyway, so it makes it easier. I don't wanna have to worry about it. stand out not really I guess mellow kind of but we'll see so everything that I say is a is applicable across both sites um, except for Roberson is in play on DK not in play on FanDuel but he's 3800 on DK Guard and forward eligibility just makes it really easy. They've got a 105.25 implied total, which is 10th out of 18 today. So Russ needs 56. You know, obviously no issues there. Um, I don't have any problem taking Russ. Then Paul George at 7600. I'm all over that. And people will be on them for that, for narrative reasons. And then Mello needs 33. Um, he's hit that in two of the last four. He's had a lot of stinkers. I'll pass on Mello. I think there's going to be value elsewhere. But I don't hate it. And then we'll go to the Magic. Magic are hosting the Clippers. Uh, this one definitely doesn't have a line. Uh, we know that Gallo is out for the Clippers, but I don't think that we have any official news on the guys from the Magic. Um, yeah, see, no line. Um, so my assumption right now is that Aaron Gordon is playing. Um, I think that was really the only relevant news on the Magic side. Uh, you don't want any part of any of the Magic guys on DK except for you know you can look at Peyton Simmons and Vooch um, 
I don't see Peyton being in play on D or on FanDuel. I'm gonna look at <clears throat> Simmons and Vooch, and that's it. The pricing on the uh, on the Magic is really bad right now. Oh. Thank God it's already Wednesday. I'm ready for a Christmas break. Obviously, I'll be in and out for Christmas, but we do celebrate Christmas here at my house, so I will be around, so to speak. But, you know, it's, it's the holidays. <laughs> All right, Orlando. So I want to look at Simmons and Vooch. That's it. But I don't think that you can play Gordon or Alfred Payton right now. So Simmons needs 32. Um, yeah, Fournier is still out. I knew I was missing somebody. Um, it's not my idea of a good time, but I'm okay with Simmons. And then Vooch needs 46, which is, whew, it's a lot. Although he's been over 55 in his last three, just Playing out of his gourd. Whew. Over 50 in four of his last five. Wow. Yeah, I mean, no reason to not take a look at him. What has his... He must have, like, a straight line to the ceiling here. So this is just the day the game was played, the amount of minutes, and then uh, the fantasy points per minute scored. And that's what I'm just looking at here, just for you know a visualization of a guy's um, production. So the jagged blue line is minutes played, and then the bars are, or the columns are, uh, the fantasy points per minute. The green line is a rolling five-game average, so these last five games he has just been unreal scoring right now 1.6 ish points per minute in his last five nuts just nuts ride that wave what is the salary done i mean it has to be up by a thousand right oh he just jumped man he would have looked a lot tastier at 85 than he does at 93 He's still, he's just playing really well. It's probably a little bit more expensive than I would like. I'm assuming I'll see a center that I prefer, but he, he, he just looks kind of good tonight. I mean, with him stepping out, ability to hit the three, um, you know, DJ is not going to be doing much of that. We'll go to the Clippers now. I've got it at 105.5, which would be ninth. Um... And then there will be no Gallo in this game. So, um, I think that you could look at Teodosic on DK, but I, I wouldn't trust it. But he's 3,900, so it's worth a, a peek. I think maybe Wesley Johnson. Lou Williams' salary is starting to come back down. Nope. No, it's not. Well, I mean, it's down, but... I thought it was down more than that. I thought it was higher. I don't think there's going to be any part of the Clippers here that we are uh, clamoring over. Yeah, I don't really see it here. You know, I don't want DeAndre even coming off of, you know, a couple solid games. He'd been playing really poorly. The last four, he's been pretty good. Um, Wesley Johnson needs 23. Yeah, 
no. I, there's nothing on the Clippers for me. Let's go to the Wiz. Uh, right now, the assumption is John Wall plays. So I'm moving forward with that sort of information. I think he's in play on DK big time. If he's playing, it's only 7,900. It's a great salary. Other than that, I don't think anything is in play on Fandle. Could Beal, Porter, Oubre. I mean, not Gortat because the salary. I mean, he's just not playing. I don't want any part of the Wizards. 107.5 implied total, which is sixth on the night. You know, somebody's going to have a good game there, but it's not value on paper. Um, there's no, there are no plays on FanDuel from the Wizards. I think. Maybe Cali Oubre if you squint hard enough. But I want to see, like, it's just, there's there's no reason to force it. And then Memphis, um, I mentioned in the recap video yesterday, you know, they're just playing bad and, you know, body language is bad. The team's unhappy. You know, you get Marc Gasol putting up 25 fantasy points, Tyreek putting up 16. They just keep playing poorly. No Mike Conley. No stability. They've got a 99.5 implied total, which is 17th of 18 on the night. Um, has anything happened with their salaries? Because that's really the only reason I see to even look at the Grizzlies. So Gasol is down from 84 to 81. I think I have to look at him. And then Tyreek is down to 73. I have to look at them just because of how much they're going to play, but it's not a good time to be taking the Grizzlies. They're just not. I mean, you if you want to be contrarian, stack a Grizzlies lineup. Cool. Everything in one line. Yeah, I can't even copy the Grizzlies correctly. Okay. Who the hell are they playing now? Wizards. Forgot immediately. Yeah, I don't... Where, where, what's the upside in taking them? I'm good. I'm good. I don't want any part of either of these guys. If you want Jamichael Green on DK, it's fine. 4,400. It's the best I could do. If you want Andrew Harrison at DK, 3,700. Go ahead. That's it. I spent too much time just looking at it in general. So the Celtics. And here's going to be the first spot where we've got some value. Some real, real value. Um, <clears throat> Horford is not playing tonight, so Aaron Baines at 3,600 is uh, going to be the, the center du jour tonight. But we do want to take a look at the rest of the Celts. I have a feeling this is going to really negatively impact the Celtics. Um, well, I mean, I'm not... That's not like news. Um, they're gonna, they should be worse when Al Horford's not on the court. But I really think that he's... A major linchpin in why everything has been working so well for them this year. So I'm anxious to see how they play um, without him. 113.5 implied total. This is a made up line. Uh, I have them as seven point favorites at home against the Nuggets with the assumption that Jokic plays. But I th think that might be, uh, you know, not the best assumption right now. But there hasn't been any news. So it's better to project him in than project him out. You don't want to have your eye on value to start it's a lot easier to pivot into value than out of it um, okay 
So corner threes. So we want to take a peek at Jalen Brown. I will never look at Marcus Smart. All right, Kyrie, 81, so he needs 40. No Horford. That makes me feel like he's going to go after it tonight. Denver has no point guard defense, so I really like Kyrie. Um, Jalen Brown seems a little bit too expensive. Where's Tatum hiding? Yeah, I think I'd prefer Tatum over Brown. Eh, well, I don't really prefer either of them. But Aaron Baines, sign me up. Um, it's going to be hard for me to see a situation where I don't have Aaron Baines as my center. He should be owned out the ass. 3,600. He's going to have to play 20 plus minutes, barring any, you know, weird disasters. But he just opens everything else up. It's, there's no real other way to go about it. Um, <clears throat> I think that's it for me for Boston, Irving, and Baines. And then, you know, they're interesting in GPPs if you want to go for like Daniel Tice or, you know, Marcus Smart. Those are, you can, I can see a stack scenario in this game. Now we'll go to Denver. As I said, I've got Jokic in. That's a pivoting move if we need it. Uh, 106.5 implied total, which would be eighth on the night if that were the, uh, the actual line. It seems pretty reasonable to me, so we'll see. Would be a good game for Jokic, but that seems pretty scary. And, you know, you don't want to take Jokic tonight. Wilson Chandler at 4,100. You just have to. Like, you have to take a look at him. Um, if Jokic is playing, I don't really have any interest in Jamal Murray. He doesn't seem to be as good from a fantasy perspective when Jokic is on the floor. Um, and then that kind of mutes the ability to use, like, Trey Lyles or, you know, Plumlee, anything like that. Will Barton, 7,000. What happened there? Yeah, down 800. That's interesting. Kerry Harris down 200 more to 58. So, you guys know how I feel about Gary Harris. He needs 29 for value. That's, yeah. For sure. Um, you know, Will Barton did get a little dinged up at the end of last night's game. So, you want to see news there. But I'd be fine with saying, you know, Will Barton's in play as well. Go to Miami. Um, Heat hosting the Blazers. Heat 102.75 implied total, which is 14th. I don't think there's a line on this because of Nurkic. Nope, there is a line. Okay. Uh, Miami is legit three-point favorite, so that's good. Um, right off the bat, Tyler Johnson's been getting some increased minutes over the past couple. Um, so he's definitely going to be in play. I don't really like taking, I just feel like I never get like my finger on the pulse of the heat correctly. They just have so many like really unique guys and it always seems to be like one guy that I'm not looking at that goes off. Dragic needs 33. Yeah, he's been okay lately. I can entertain that. 
And then Tyler Johnson needs 23. He's been over 20 in his last four, all corresponding with being upwards of 27 minutes. So if he's going to get 27 minutes, and I have him projected for 29, no reason to suspect he can't get to value. Um, I don't really like taking Josh Richardson or Justice Winslow. Um, I'd only want to be on Richardson if you know they shot or they gave up a ton of threes, and that's the it's the exact opposite. Um, Richardson should not be in play tonight. So with that said, he'll probably just fucking go off. <laughs> All right, let's look at Portland. Um, I have Nurkic projected as back in. Again, it's easier to pivot the other way. I mean, we know what we're looking at here. Dame and CJ. Aminu is too expensive on FanDuel now, which is weird considering he hasn't been very good. I don't know if there's no reason for his salary to have gone up. Now, Portland has a 99.75 implied total, which is 16th out of 18th. That's just really weird. Um, on, a, on a different night, I would say I really like Nurkic. Um, but right now, I think I'm just going to look at CJ, maybe Evan Turner. I don't think... I'm going to pay too much attention to Dame, but I'll look. He needs 47. Um, he's been over, he's been at that marker higher in three of his, well, all four of his last games, basically. And he's been over 40 in six of seven. How has he done against, how did he do against Miami last year? One big, one small. Yeah, I'm going to take a peek at uh, CJ instead. 68, so that's 34. He's only been there once in his last seven, but I don't really like taking anybody here from the Blazers. That's just not really a great game to focus on, but you know, if we end up at CJ, that's fine. And then Evan Turner, 25 minutes. He's at 3,600 on FanDuel. Um, so that's, what, 18? Um... If he gets those minutes, it should be pretty close. It could be an interesting punt. That's all for me there, though. Now we'll go to Chicago, and this is a game where who the hell knows. Bulls. Is this a real line? Oh, I feel like it is. Yeah, it is a real line. Okay. Bulls are... Four point underdogs at home to the Jazz, 95.75 implied total, which is last on the day. Markinen, by all accounts, should be playing, so that makes the Markinen, Miritich, Portis conundrum, you know, a little bit more difficult to, to hash out. Um, you re we really need to see them play together for a couple games to see sort of how the rotations are going to shake out. Markinen looks great on DK. 5,200. Um, I don't want any part of him on FanDuel or Miritich or Portis. I'll look at David Nwaba at 4,600. Um, Chris Dunn's still in play on DK, but I think most people know that. Nwaba needs 23. You know, he's been there in his last three. I'm comfortable with that. Getting a lot of like the lower mid tier small forwards today. That's that's rare. It's gonna open up things for taking Giannis. 
I don't see the need to dig into anything else here. It's the worst game on the schedule. I mean, who are we? There's a lot better crap out there, and we still haven't even gotten to the two highest implied total teams tonight. Uh, Utah Rodney Hood is back, so good luck figuring out what happens with the minutes between Rubio, Mitchell, Hood, and Burks. I assume Mitchell's minutes will hold. Rubio might lose one or two. Burks will drop, and then Hood will fill in. And then uh, Joe Johnson's supposed to play, so I've got him for 15 minutes now. So that should take a dent out of, you know, Ingles, Cephalosha. I think that um, Jarebko is now just going to be, like, out of the rotation probably. So really we want to look at favors. 5,100. Did he, that, is that like a gigantic drop? Because he's popping out in a really weird way, even more so than normal. Okay, so he had the big drop a game before that. I need to look at it because my projections naturally uh, overrate favors, but no, he's just 100% in play. He needs 25. Hasn't been really doing it, but he's been right around there in a points per minute basis, so I'm, I'm comfortable with it. And that's all I want here. Um, Donovan Mitchell looks okay on DK. I'd even explore Rubio on DK, but this game sucks. You don't want any part of it. I think favors on FanDuel is the only part you should actually look at. Now we'll go to the Pels. Um, best I can tell, everybody's in for the Pelicans tonight. Makes it a little weird for the minutes for like Darius Miller and Cunningham, but I don't think that's really where you're looking anyway. Um, it's Rondo. It's Drew. Surprisingly now, it's Econ Moore. <laughs> um, AD and Boogie. They're uh, 110.5 implied total, which is fourth, and I'm pretty sure I made that line up. I did, basically because of the AD news. I'm going to end up liking AD, I'm sure of it, um, which is going to be terrifying. I don't think he's going to be rosterable in a cash game. I assume his ownership will be pretty low. People will be nervous, but uh, he's probably a really good de uh, GPP play tonight. I'd have to think about it a little bit more. Hell of the Pels play? Milwaukee, right? Milwaukee's defense is terrible. Yeah, Drew looks great. Boogie looks great. Oh, it's a shame you can't go with Boogie if you go with Baines. DK. Rondo. Rondo looks great. Okay, Rondo needs 30, we'll say. Been over that in five of his last six. Jameer should play, but I still like Rondo. Um, Drew needs 37. He's been there in... Four of his last five does concern me because he seems to really thrive with um, AD off the floor, but I I have to say that he's interesting tonight. Eton Moore needs 23. Um, he's had two really big games for Eton Moore in the past five. And even in the games that weren't huge, he got over 20, so it's not a sinkable number. Um, it does shoot a lot of corner threes, which plays into this game. So it might be a game game late here, but you know, a uh, Pell stack also looks good again. Bucks aren't exactly good on D. AD needs 55. I mean. I like it. I'd, I'd be lying if I said I didn't. And then Boogie needs 60. That's one I don't really want a part of. Boogie comes into play if AD's out. Otherwise, I don't think he does. I think he's too expensive. Milwaukee now. Um, 104.5 implied total, which is 11th. Um... I assume that I'm going to be all over Giannis tonight just because of the way the um, 
positions shake out. We'll see. We have one more giant piece of value on FanDuel to hit. It has a perfect position for tonight, too. Couldn't be happier. It's going to be great. I'm going to win some money tonight. I feel it. I feel it in my plums. And in my bones. Uh, Pels. I think I did a pretty good Will Ferrell in Eastbound and Down. I feel it in my plums. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. Okay. Bucks, 104.5. It's 11th. Sign me up for Giannis. I don't even need to look at anything else. Ante to Kun Umpo. I could pretty much type his name without looking now. That makes me so happy. And then let's do Middleton. I'll look at Bledsoe and Brogdon too. Um, no Snell, no Delhi. Gary Payton up to 20 minutes could be an interesting GPP look. Bledsoe is at 6,900, so he needs 35. Um, you know, he's been over 30 in the last three. Could be an interesting game for him here. I'm fine with listing him. Middleton at 74, so that's 37. Uh, over 30 in the last three. Only to value, though, twice in the last seven. Um... I don't see me ending up with him, but again, it's not, there's not a problem with it. And then Brogdon, 47. So he needs 23. He's been over that in the last three. I think he's definitely in play with Snell out. A lot of bucks. A lot of bucks. And then, you know, you can go with Thon, um in a GPP if like you want to bet on blocks or something crazy but he's just he doesn't do enough on the court and his minutes are relatively limited he's not they're not just he's not going to go off and they're not going to run him out for 34 minutes or something so last two games and they're both going to be uh fairly interesting from a fantasy perspective I wish I would have started with them so first we got the Suns they're not the interesting part because they're the Suns um, 103 implied total. There's no way. I, this this line is real. So they are 11-point underdogs at home, which is embarrassing. Uh, I like Greg Monroe a lot on DK. He should be the one that plays. It should be Chandler that sits tonight. And if that's the case, um, Monroe getting like 25 minutes, which seems to be around where he is when Chandler sits, uh, he's a huge, huge value on DK. So I can see a great scenario of doing a like a Monroe, Baines, and a uh, guy to be named in the next game shortly, stack, and really open up a lot of big value on DK. For DK also, uh, be aware that Tyler Eulis was a little dinged up yesterday. Um, so he's a really good value at 4,200, but make sure he's like healthy. Look, there's nothing here that I want to look at with any confidence. I guess Josh Jackson on DK is fine, um, but I'm I, I can't look at TJ Warren. Nobody gets enough minutes to trust. I like Greg Monroe. Like I'd be interested in playing him in FanDuel in a cash game if it wasn't for Baines. But I'm avoiding all of the Suns tonight. I don't see it. Um, Eleven point underdogs at home is uh, dreadful. I don't really know what they're gonna do, and I don't want to know what they're gonna do. So Toronto, like I said, huge favorites, 11-point favorites in Phoenix. So they have a 114.5 implied total, which is second. Um, so a lot to like here. We do want to dig in. Man, I think today's lineup, I think it's going to, when I throw this into the optimizer in like 5, 10 minutes, um, I think something interesting is going to pop right off the bat and I'm going to be like locked in for the day. Okay, it's a DeMar DeRozan game. That's all I need to see. And I'll look at Surge. No, 
that's probably it. Well, I'll look at Lowry too, but... Okay, Lowry at 8,000. What's his salary been doing? He's down. Down 300. Okay. So he needs 40. He's hit it three times in his last seven. I mean, I like it. I just prefer DeRozan, I think, who needs 44. He's been over 40 in five of his last six, and the only time that he wasn't, he was at 39. But he hasn't been going crazy off. I would guess that playing the Suns would be a perfect excuse to just go off because they are really shitty <laughs> really really shitty surge needs too much 20 30 29 it's been there last four last five he's been at 29 or higher um has his price moved a lot because that's the only thing that concerns me up to 58 i don't love it I don't expect him to pop up too much, but I can't disregard him. Then we'll get to the Rockets. Last game, 9.30 start. 116.25 uh, implied total, which would be first on the night. Um, you know, Paul Harden, Gordon, Ariza, Capella, I can't go for. But whenever I go for Capella, he doesn't go off. Whenever I don't go for Capella, he plays 22 minutes and puts up 44 fantasy points or something. Dude is just a per-minute machine. And they're playing the Hornets. Key takeaway from this Hornets game, no Nick Batum. This is going to be tasty. So, James, well, let's start at Chris Paul. 47. Um, he's hit it. He's been over 40 in his last three. Really rounding into form. I'm in for Chris Paul, potentially. I'm in for James Harden. I don't have to look too much harder. What's the weather? High 45. Ooh, currently 31. Mm -mm. Harden needs 60, and I'm cool with it. Uh, Gordon needs 25. No reason to um, want to go a different direction there. Played really well for me Saturday night. Nope, not Saturday. Monday night. I don't really want Ryan Anderson. Trevor Ariza is just too steady for me. So I don't see anything else there. Ariza looks pretty good in DK. Now, the uh, the final piece of value, Jeremy Lamb, um, starting without Nick Batum. Insane amount of value. Guaranteed 100%. Lock them in for cash games. Lock them in for whatever you want, really. But um, he is a 100 billion percent must play for tonight in cash. He'll be 80% owned at less than 5,000 salary. It's really, it's, it's really easy. Now let's look at the uh, rest of the squad here. I'm going to take a peek at Kemba. Dwight against Houston is funny. Kemba, 7,900, so he needs 40. Hasn't been there in the last three. The last three have been quiet. 
He gets Chris Paul. Not for me. 103 imply, 103.75 implied total is 12th. MKG 48. He's probably going to play a lot unless they play him off the court. 25. No, I'm not going to bet on that one. Frank the Tank. How many minutes did he play in the last one? 18. He needs 20. I mean, if they want to try to keep up offensively, I could see that being a Frank game. Some, I'll entertain it. Probably not going to happen in cash. I think that's probably it for me right now. Um, so that's the short list. Let's sort that out by position. See what came out interesting. <clears throat> I usually miss a full position. A lot of shooting guards. A lot of point guards. Let's run it. I'm anxious to see what spits out. It's always fun to get an idea of like where you're where you're looking. At the ass crack of dawn. God damn. Fantasy Cruncher, get your shit together. Gary Payton's Gary Payton. Why does him having a number at the end of his name really throw it off? You think you think his dad's coming back to play? Okay, so as as expected, Jeremy Lamb in 100% of those lineups. Um, Paul George on the revenge game. So it's Baines in only 40% of the lineups, which I think is interesting. But I'm not going to go Marcus Saul. Only other option was Vooch at 22. So let's lock in Baines and we'll see. That's gonna, it's gonna really hash things out. That's putting Russ in almost guaranteed. Can I get Russ and Harden? I can. One, two, three. I probably don't want three Hornets. <clears throat> in fact, I definitely don't want three Hornets. I do think it's interesting that Frank the Tank is popping here. So, point guard is basically Russ, Bledsoe, Paul, Irving, Lowry, all guys I knocked, or all guys that I listed here. Um, Harden in 38% of lineups, which I like. I'm going to lock in, f I will leave favors for now. Actually, no, he's, well, it might end up being Frank. So I think that Harden is a good play. Well, I haven't seen Giannis a lot. And is that the spot where I should be looking? That's a pretty big gap. Although the Harden gap is even bigger. More value plays, <clears throat> more value plays at the bottom of small forward, I think. So let's see if we can do Harden and Russ, and what spits out if I do that. All right, let's say favors is a, a lockety lock. And then at my other small forward, <clears throat> it's not going to be, <clears throat> sorry guys, it's not going to be Justice Winslow 
or MKG. It can be Bojan, but I'd be happy with Wilson Chandler as well. My other point guard can be someone decent too. Where do I take the haircut? Okay, so it's one decent point guard, or one decent salary, and two minimal guys. So at power forward, it's favors and... Does Ibaka pop? He does. So does Frank. I don't know if I could totally trust the Frank one, but he's got to get some minutes, right? Coming back off of that injury. I'm going to put Wilson Chandler in to save the most money, and I could probably jump up from that. So I could do Bledsoe, Lyles won't be a thing. I don't want Tyler Johnson and Mello. Bledsoe, Tice, no. No, Bledsoe, Frank. I think Bledsoe Frank is probably where I'm going to have to end up right now. Yeah, that, that's where I'm going to sit for right now. So there's the there's the placeholder. Bledsoe, West, Bledsoe, Westbrook, Harden, Lamb, George, Chandler, Favors, Kaminsky, Baines. This won't be where it rolls. I'll hope for a little bit more news. I'm not totally confident in the Kaminsky play. Um, but that's... Uh, I'm really happy with that lineup. So, that is it for me. Oh, through the looking glass. Um, like I said, I will be back for lock tonight. 6 o'clock. Um, so I'll be here for the hour before lock. Uh, if you like this video, like it. Subscribe, Twitter, Patreon, my website for the projections. Um, you know that you guys know the drill at this point. Um, but that's all I've got. It's going to be a good night. Value is in the right spots. Uh, things are opening up, and there's enough studs playing across the board that I think we might see some balance. Um, it's really going to be about you know figuring out who's the best fit. It's been a while for that one. So um, that's all I've got. Have a good day, and I'll see you guys at six.